Hi everyone. Today I want to demonstrate a therapy session with my friend Yasaman. This is just for educational purposes, so this is not a real therapy session. I hope you enjoy it. Hi Yasaman. Hi. What has brought you here today? Um, actually, um, there are some things that I'm think thinking about for a while. Is uh, it's related to my work? Actually, I'm a student. Mm -hmm. I'm a graduate student, and sometimes there are a lot of workload, and I feel overwhelmed at work. I try my best to uh, do everything on time, but there are some things that I cannot complete. For example, by the end of each week, and it's not the whole problem. For example, I plan to do it on the next week, or I have some plans to follow my work uh, but the problem is that I should report my results to my supervisor and uh, he's, he's a good person actually he tries to help uh, but the point is that um, for example if you work a lot but you don't get a good result he thinks that you haven't done enough work but you mm -hmm. have been working all week and he 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 actually judge you because of this yeah and for example he actually the problem is that he usually doesn't give me time to work or show that I can do something or just he doesn't support enough he just criticize mm -hmm. and after each of our sessions he thinks that he's helping he wants to motivate me but he he motivates me with fear you know you know i get stressed because of each session you know i get stressed for doing my work but you know i cannot tell him that for example you can instead of giving a stress you can help me you can give me ideas but no and the problem is that i cannot give him um i cannot give him my opinion about what he says because he's a supervisor mm. yeah he's graduated studies he pays right yeah so i just say okay okay i answer his questions and I come out of the office and because of the stress I cannot work for a couple of days then you know there's no positive point when he talks in that way that for example you should work more or what you do is not good mm -hmm. yeah I just get stressed after it and I think that I'm strong to Try to just forget it just after a couple of days and continue my work again. But some things that happen every couple of weeks or maybe every month if I cannot do something. Even if, for example, in the previous in our previous meeting I had good results and I don't have good results in a week, then it is it he's responsibility is criticizing and um, I, I cannot tell him anything now mm -hmm. so basically he's uh, trying to push you to get the work done but he uses uh, fear instead of maybe encouraging you to do the better work yes exactly mm -hmm. and maybe some uh, unrealistic expectation that he has Yes, he wants to. He wants everything to be very mm -hmm. complete, very good, because he's also a very young mm -hmm. professor. Yeah, he, I'm one of his first students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he thinks that oh, he's doing a great job when he talks with me in that way. But but at the end, I'm just sad, and yeah, mm -hmm. and sometimes I think that if I wasn't that much a strong person mm -hmm. then if anyone else was instead of me in that situation how could they deal with it but sometimes I think because we have other co-workers I have another co-worker that is 
older and he's working in our group sometimes i think of for example telling him about it but the point is that uh, I, i'm not sure about doing this because for example i have a lot more to do in the group you know if even later he wants to give me recommendations or anything that makes me fearful of just for example telling him that for example what you're doing is giving me more stress mm -hmm. and instead of helping after a session i cannot work for a couple of days right yeah so when he criticizing you you're telling me that you're not gonna do anything for a couple of days right yeah sometimes uh, for example, I go to the lab and try to work, but I cannot work, for example, yeah, even, uh, it, yeah, I cannot concentrate because because of our meeting. And I think that, okay, go, mm -hmm. go to office, rest, you, you can come back and work, for example, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So when he criticizes you, how do you feel? No, uh, I feel that... You know, I feel that the point is that I have, I think that I have many good points that if, mm. if I have time to show, if I have time to, for example, start my work uh, in a good point because it's a new work and I'm still learning, you know, uh, I think that if I can, I'm better than what he thinks. Mm -hmm. But, but right now, uh, I need time to show it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just... Yeah, I just think that he's, he's really uh, making judgments that you're good mm -hmm. or you're bad. Mm -hmm. So then whatever he says, he gives you this message or you feel like you're not good or you're not good enough yes he right yeah. and you, you you know that it's not true but when he says that it's it's how you feel right yes yes mm -hmm. exactly because because i worked previously for example with my previous supervisors i know that i have some points like being a little slower than others but at the end they really i remember that they liked my work i remember that they said that you're a good student and they gave me Good recommendations because of my work but right now I cannot tell him anything I just look at him when he talks yeah and at the end I come out mm -hmm. and try to solve it for myself try yeah try to start the week after it mm -hmm. right a tricky situation right so if you could say whatever you wanted to him what would you tell him? Maybe, maybe if I could have told him that, for example, instead of giving me stress to push me to do my work, he can in encourage me for what I've done. He can come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. Or if he thinks that one step is hard for me to do and it's made me slower he can come to the lab with me mm -hmm. you know if I yeah I I I think that I might tell him one day mm -hmm. that what he what for example what you what you're telling me and wants to wants to encourage me he actually wants to encourage me to do my work, but when it's that um, it has an opposite effect, it just makes me more stressed. Yeah, uh, make me worrying about what he's telling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it's hard for me at, for one or two days after our meetings. Then I'm a young person too, you know, I have friends, I mm -hmm. talk with them, I go out, you know, I get happy again, I, get, I start to do my work, but at that time, just, it makes me, yeah, it makes me really sad. Mm -hmm. 
And how do you think he's going to respond to you if you actually tell him that? I think that he doesn't know that it makes me stressful. Because, uh, for example, he wants to help. For example, he, he says that you should, for example, think about what you want to do, for example, before sleeping. You no, know, he wants to help. Uh, and once I said that, yes, I'm thinking about that. What would happen if I cannot do this project? Then he says that, oh, you've got stress. And right this yeah, I think with myself, I, I cannot tell him that yes, you're you're getting mm. me the stress. Right. But I cannot tell him mm. this. Mm. That uh, he said, for example, he says that oh, you've got stress, so you can come and talk with me. Then I'm like, this, oh, you, you're giving me stress to do the work. So how can I tell this to you? Right, and that's not productive, right? He wants to help, but that's doesn't seem productive no. for either of you. No, he doesn't know what he's telling. And at the other side, I cannot, I get really unhappy after the meetings. I cannot what to do. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. So you mean, uh, you're not sure what he's asking you to do or you don't know how to respond to him when he criticizing you? Uh, I don't know what to res what to respond, and I, I for my work, I I just know that I should just forget it and come up with a plan and continue the work. But at that moment, yeah, I, I don't know what to respond, what to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just. Just look at him and say, okay. Mm -hmm. But you don't feel okay, obviously. Yeah. Right, yeah. How do you think you could maybe express yourself a little bit uh, while uh, you respect him, but also you're not suppressing yourself and your emotions? Yeah, yeah. I can tell him, for example, uh, at that moment, for example, I can tell him that for example, this thing that you say um, just make me more stressful for doing my work. And, and what is interesting is that he repeats it in every meeting. And uh, once I thought that I should tell him that, okay, you, for example, you told this once. And when you just say it every time, it makes me more stressful. But, uh, but, um, but uh, usually I feel I forget at that moment that mm -hmm. just you know I cannot just tell him you no. Know, I, I come after the meeting and then when I'm thinking about it, I think that why don't you talk at that moment? You no, know, and, and just looking at, at him. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. can tell him. I can tell him that, for example, this topic makes me more stressful mm -hmm. because he's a reasonable person. He, he wants to help, but uh, actually he can't, but, uh, but he's reasonable. Maybe if I tell him at that moment in the session, it, it might be good, but I usually forget it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in that moment that he criticizes or say something negative, because you're not ready, you don't know how to answer, right? Yeah. But later on, you think of possible responses that you could yeah. tell to him. Yeah, I can, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe the reason is that I, I cannot negotiate that much. Yeah, because I'm not a talkative person a lot. I'm usually quiet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't come up with responses at that moment. Mm -hmm. What do you think you don't uh, negotiate that much, as you said? I usually didn't, yeah, I usually didn't have that character. I just, I just listened to others, yeah, tried to be kind. Mm -hmm. you know, these situations didn't happen a lot. Mm -hmm. 
that I want to give responses at the moment. Yeah, I've used to just I, I'm used to just listening. Yeah, I'm more than thinking at that moment and come with responses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe there's my character from childhood. Mm-hmm. So have you had in other situations in childhood or later on that you wanted to say something and you couldn't or you stopped yourself? Uh, yes, actually, I usually didn't I usually didn't tell others what I really want or what I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember even at a school, for example, they they were there was a situation that uh, there there was a play for a ceremony at a school and I couldn't tell that I really want to participate in it. And later, my teacher told uh, told my mother that she could she she should be able to talk about it. Yeah, I, I don't usually tell others what I really want. And so so I just want to stop you here. So in this memory. Uh, your mother told you that um, uh, you should be able to uh, tell how you feel. Uh, no, actually, mm, uh, actually, my teacher told my mother mm. so that she teacher. should be able to tell me. For example, you shouldn't mm-hmm. come here and tell me mm-hmm, what, what Yasa mm-hmm. wants. Mm-hmm. And you remember that moment that? Yeah, I really remember was... it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but right. but later on. Mm, when you think about it, uh, 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 you, you listen to what others said. And mm-hmm. for example, if someone suggests something, I say, okay, let's do it. But it might it might not be what I really want. Mm-hmm. Um, so when your uh, teacher told your mom that uh, she should, you know, uh, tell what, whatever she wants herself, you shouldn't do it. How did you feel? Yeah, I was a child. It was somehow strange for me, you know, like a new, mm-hmm. like a new data that you should come and say what you want. Yeah. No, I just, I just thought that, okay, maybe I should do it in the future. But I was mm-hmm. also a shy person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that play actually. Has other students participated and but mm, yeah, but I remember what he what what she said. I mm. I remember it until now. Mm. Any feelings come out when you think about that? No, just I remember how much I liked participating in that play, mm. and and I think that she was right actually. Mm-hmm. So you also mentioned that you usually, when people you know ask you something or say let's do let's do this, let's do that, you agree with them, but sometimes uh, it's not what you want to do, mm-hmm. and then you feel what what do you feel? How do you feel after accepting what they're asking? Um, if, for example, if I had fun, sometimes it's it's okay for me, but there are some situations that. I think later I think that it wasn't really what I really wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I sometimes get unhappy for it. And I think that, okay, I should have told them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I should have told them what I really want. Mm-hmm. I should have told them my decision. Mm-hmm. So now that you're talking about it, you're thinking about it, what stops you from telling? Uh, what you want to do or expressing your opinion when it's not, you know, the same as the other person. When you want to disagree with them or, you know, want to say no, for example. I, I do want others to be happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's the reason that, for example, mm-hmm. I agree. I think that if I agree, I'll make them more happy. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But... No, I had these experiences, and right now I'm thinking that maybe my happiness is important too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
but but usually even after having these experiences right now i cannot even still i cannot tell others that but i really want yeah there are some situations that still i say okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah because yeah. because you're right it's it's a hard thing to change right it's like a it's part of our personality it's also a habit that we have and um, you should have, you know, good enough reasons to change something that you uh, you always do, right? So if you want to summarize like our session, what I think about what we talked about is usually when we don't say what we want to say, is either because we don't know what we want, right? So in the first place, we didn't really think about what we want, so it's we're unsure, we can't really decide, or which is more common is because of the fear of rejection right and that's one of the biggest fear that we all have obviously so um what's what's hap what happens if i say to my friend you know that i'm not going to come to your party or what happens uh, if i tell my supervisor that i'm not going to do this right and of course there in some cases there are going to be some consequences right um, but there should be some boundaries between, you know, how much you are flexible, how much they are flexible, you know, how much you respect their needs, how much uh, they respect your needs, right? And when you talk about, you know, these examples, specifically each example more and more, we can figure out how you felt in each situation. And then we process some of those feelings. For example, it could be fear, it could be sadness. And then we want to figure out like what are some of your thoughts uh, that you have um, when, for example, your supervisor um, giving you negative comments um, or in any other examples. Um, and then we want to figure out like what was the thing that you wanted to say? What is the thing that you need as a person? And then we, we can figure out a way to communicate it, right? So does this make sense? Yes, yes I think so. Mm, and, and also, maybe I should uh, find a way of remembering that, uh, remembering that my own decision or my own needs are important as others. Mm -hmm. Mm, yes, maybe maybe if I remember it, I will I will talk more about what I need, mm. or I won't be that much shy in telling others. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you think also remembering that you also have a right and you also have needs is something that helps you. Yes, I I think so, but but I sure. usually forget that. Makes sense. And also knowing what, what is the thing that you want, right? Uh, and how to communicate them effectively. Mm. Makes sense. And that's something um, very um, common that happened to people, you know, because we want to be loved, we want to, you know, avoid rejections. Uh, so that's something common that happens in different scenarios, different situations. And um, that's not usually something that they teach us as a child. So we have to learn it by ourselves. And it takes a little while for us to be in tune with our emotion, with our needs, but it's something really doable, I would say. Okay, do you have any question before we end the session? No, thank you so much for the time. Thank for you. The talk. Sure. Thank you as well, and thank you for being our participant in this role play. Thank you for watching this role play. I hope you enjoyed it.